Good evening, everyone. I'm Gansham Barista, and I'm going to speak on Langston Hughes' poem, The Belt of the Land. As we all know, that there has been discrimination all over the world, and this happens only because people believe in different facts. And they follow the orthodox religions by the laws of which we find people are segregated in the name of caste, class, gender, and caste. As we all know that African Americans have been suffering in this race-based environment for a long time. Similarly, in our country, we know that thousands of the Dalits, they too are the victims of the caste system. So discrimination of any type must not happen anywhere. In this poem, The Ballad of the Landlord, Langston Hughes talks about the white hegemony that dominates and takes away the rights of the African American people in America. This does not happen in America only, but this is every fact where people follow old religious faith, blind rituals, superstitions, and so on. So here in the very first stanza of the poem, Langston Hughes addresses the problem of African-American people in America. It is the story of a tenant. He is an African-American. Let us see what he has to say in the first stanza of the poem. Landlord, landlord, my roof has sprung a leak. Don't you remember? He is trying to remind his landlord, the landlord who is a white person, who is his master, that there has been a leakage in the roof and it is the duty of the landlord to come to see and repair it. In the second stanza, the tenant once again addresses his problems and says, Landlord, landlord, this step is broken down. When you come up yourself, it is a wonder you don't so the steps are broken. There is a leakage in the room. And still, instead of attending uh, these problems of the tenant who is an African American, what does the landlord does here? He demands money, the charge. Now, the tenant is ready to pay more. But he says, Well, that is 10 bucks more I will pay you. Till you fix this house up new, that you should come and repair this damage. Now, the thing is this that the African American tenant is not ready to leave the house and the landlords starts threatening and it happens that the tenant learns that his landlord now is going to get eviction orders is going to cut off his electricity and going to throw away furniture in the streets let us see what tenant has to say. What? You're gonna get eviction orders? You're gonna cut off my heat? You're gonna take my furniture and throw it in the street? Mm, you're talking high and mighty. Now here, this tenant realizes that the white 
landlord has now started threatening him. The moment he realizes that this is a threat to his life, this tenant opposes the landlord and says, if you are talking high and mighty, then I am too ready to fight with you. And I know once I land my fist on you, you would realize how strong I am. No. What happens here? That the master, the landlord, who is a white person, he goes to the police station, registers the case against the tenant, and tells police, police, come and get this man. He's trying to ruin the government and overturn the land. Now he blames this white landlord, blames the tenant that he is going to work on the land, he is going to dissolve, he is going to ruin the government. So the government should come in action, the police should come in action. And what happens? The white policeman who is in the charge of the police station, the white media people, they support this white man, the landlord. Even when this case goes to the court, the white judge takes the side of the white man who is the landlord and sends this black tenant to prison. Let us see what happens here. Coppers whistle, patrol bell, arrest. And then the next day, headlines in press, man threatens landlord, tenant held Nobel, judge gives Negro 90 days in county jail. So, this is how the judiciary works, or this is how the judiciary has been working. Even though we say that there is a democracy, yeah, it is. On paper, if we see the fact, the law is never implemented in its spirit as it was expected by the constitution makers. So here, what happens? The white landlord is there. Now, he goes to the police station, the police listen him, trust him, even the media persons trust him, and even the judge trust him. Now the thing is this, that this black tenant is not at fault, he is innocent, but still as African American are not in power there at that time, there is nobody to come to rescue him, there is nobody to support him and this mainstream society take the side of the white landlord and sends the African-American to the prison. So this is how the judiciary works and Langston Hughes criticizes this system. And as I have already said that this happens everywhere. The dominant classes, those who believe in caste, caste, religion, gender, these people follow inequality in all the spheres of and the rich people dominate. The upper caste, the upper caste people dominate. How can we expect poetic justice in the real life? So this is how Langston Hughes addresses the problems of African American people and raises their bias. So we have to follow Langston Hughes the way. He raises the voice of African-American and talks about the problems that they have been facing must have to be appreciated. And that's what we need to do. We have to be on the side of the sufferer and not on the side of the 
people who follow traditions, blind faiths, blind rituals, just to maintain their supremacy and future. So that's all for today. Thank you.